Let's take a look at actually some some body camera footage. So we have this, this was released. So this video footage comes from the Phoenix police. They released a statement after James was sh shot and killed, which, which by the way, once you, once you see it, I mean, you know, he's basically dead uh, on arrival and there's no way he's going to survive that. They, they fired a ton of bullets right directly at him right through the window of the car. So uh, it's very, very, uh, very difficult to survive that. So here is the body camera footage after he was shot. So this is an officer who is rolling up on the scene after this is, had all gone down. Let's take a look. Hey, boss. Guns are Where's the gun drawn. at? It's in, his lap. it's in his lap. He just let go of it. Can we retrieve the gun and get him out and get him to fire? Hey, let me glove up. Is there? Let me glove up. So if you just count, just keep notice of how many cops are in this are, are in this video. We've got the one, you have a two, rifle three, across the street four. On their Tahoe now. Yeah, I got my rifle over there. You've got a dash cam probably Where's in the, the vehicle of that here? police uh, Tahoe sitting right in front of the car. And he's uh, you know clearly gun dead. Secure. They did pull out a gun. And that's what we have got. So that is essentially what the police department released. And they, they did release it fairly quickly, actually. This happened on July 4th. And what was, what was very interesting about we're seeing some modifications in the Phoenix Police Department's response to how they're handling these situations. So on the face of it, what they have produced is, is very good. Within the first 48 hours of this shooting taking place, they had a, a public relations video that was assembled and ready to go. And so I want to show you clips and bits and pieces from it. It's about 2.55, but just keep in mind that we, we've already clipped out really the, the most important part of what you're about to see. We, we just showed that to you. The, the video of the officer rolling up after everything had already happened, that is the body camera that they have released. I counted the four other officers who were there that we saw from that one video. There's probably another six or seven of them who you saw all the different police cars, a ton of people responded, but we can count about four maybe that were involved or were at least by the car when the shooting took place. You saw that the, the cop who was responding, the body camera that we see attached on his chest, he, he was running up after the fact, but there were four guys who were already there. So presumably there is at least some, one of them should have been wearing body cameras, you would imagine. Uh, and, or there was a vehicle, uh, a dash cam uh, recording in the vehicle of the Tahoe that was facing Mr. Garcia's vehicle. So there should be a, a lot more material than what we're getting. But what I clipped for you is really the highlight. I mean, that's it. So it was about, what was that, 30 seconds? 35 seconds? Not a lot. Well, the police put out a statement, the Phoenix police did, that they put out a statement, basically, it's a video. They put this on Instagram, and they, made, they posted it in a, in a number of different places. And you'll see what they do. They bring in their public relations person, who is a person of color, who is a minority, who is going to come through and speak about, uh, about, about what we sort of are, are, are about to see. So they go in and they detail all of the, you know, all of the situation. They say what happened. They play the 911 call, just a clip of it. And they're claiming that, you know, that this was essentially all justified. And of course, what is the video that they show us? It's the video of him pulling a gun out of the the vehicle. So let's just let's well, let's just scrub around through this and listen to a little bit of the Phoenix PD's uh, public statement that they released recently on Instagram. I'm Sergeant Mercedes Fortune with an update on a critical incident in our community of an officer involved shooting which happened Saturday afternoon near the area of 56th Avenue in Glen Rosa. There is high interest in the case with social media posts which include misinformation about the facts that led up to the shooting. The purpose of this video is to provide those facts and body-worn video currently available for release. The investigation into the shooting is still in the early stages, releasing body-worn camera footage from the officers directly involved before all witnesses and officer interviews are completed would compromise the investigation. 
Yeah, so so that's what they say that it's going to compromise the investigation, and I want you to pay close attention to that. So the body camera that's that that's available, they're going to use that word because we're going to talk about how the Phoenix police how they're changing their policy about body camera footage being released, but they're going to use that word that's available. So just keep that in mind. She just said that that she, we're going to release what however, we can. However, there that's is available. body worn camera video from an officer who was not involved in the shooting, but assisted okay, so he was on not the scene, involved. which we are sharing with you. Officers first responded to this area because a man called 911. All right, so you can see basically what she's doing. She's going to walk you through this, and she's she's walking you through the same thing I already told you. They're responding. Somebody called the police. And they show up. The, the, the rest of it is, is basically that. They show you the little clip that I've already showed you, and then they say that you know they're, they're committed to transparency and that they're going to uh, continue their investigation. In other words, there's a lot of other uh, officers who were there. They are going to continue their, their investigation. Yeah, so a couple points on that. Number one, I, I do think that it is very, very uh, positive that the Phoenix Police Department is at least thinking about these things. You know, They're thinking about, hey, when we shoot somebody, it's probably going to cause a lot of repercussions now, and we're going to need to address this with the public. So the idea that they're being cognizant of this is is obviously good. You know, I think a lot of departments are still being pretty tone deaf about some of these things. They're hearing a lot of the criticism, but they're not commenting on it or they're not making any publicly uh, perceptible changes on the back end regarding, to, you know, related to their policies, they're just sort of flying under the radar. The Phoenix Police Department, to their credit, they're doing a good job of actually trying to get in front of these things. So as you can see here from that video and from that little piece, what they're trying to do is get ahead of it, right? So if they were, you know, if they would just kind of sweep this stuff under the rug well a news somebody from the news a journalist a reporter somebody's going to get the footage it's going to leak out and it's going to explode and so you know when you're going through i was a political science undergraduate uh, before i went to law school and in, in a political science elections class or whatever it is you know i took something and one of the biggest lessons was get ahead of it if you're running for office if you are in in public office if you are you know in a position like law enforcement is you want to get ahead of the bad news before the news gets it. And so that's really what the police are doing here. They're saying, look, we know that there was an officer involved shooting. We know it resulted in a death. But listen to our side of the story first before you jump to conclusions. Here's what we think happened. And so they put together this, you know, this little story, this little explanation of, of what they did. And there's a lot of evidence that still should come out in this case that we have not seen yet and i'm going to get there so i'm not jumping to conclusions and saying that that this person uh was, was wrongfully killed or or not there is a lot more that i think still needs to come out and this situation is certainly different than some of the other stories that we've already talked about on this show right let's compare it to the george floyd case okay in this situation there's some critical evidence that's missing we don't know if james garcia did pull out his gun if he did point it at somebody there is a thing called suicide by cop that could have happened i'm not saying that it did but it is hypothetical it is a possibility and you know I, you if you're a regular of the show you know how i'm inclined whether i'm going to you know typically give the officers the benefit of the doubt ordinarily i would not because i've seen so many of these things and that's kind of the point of this show but but we still don't know that it's this one is still too close to call because there's a lot of evidence missing evidence that I think exists, whether it's from the dash cam footage on that Tahoe that was in front of his car that you can see right there. I mean, there's a police vehicle pointed right at his car. So can we see what that was recording or uh, was it equipped? There are other officers right around there. So we want to know what else is out there before we can really draw a cognitive uh, definitive solution on this thing. Whereas with George Floyd, it was pretty obvious, right? He was in handcuffs. Cop was on his neck for nine minutes. Breonna Taylor, she was home asleep. Some uh, lunatic cop fired 10 rounds through, her win uh, through the window that he couldn't even see through and killed her. You don't really need to investigate much more of that. And so this is, this is I think, significantly different. It could come back that it was justified. It could come back totally unjustified. There's just not enough there yet on that issue. On that issue. Now, the police may have had the wrong person entirely. You know, I, I still I mentioned that at the previous at the outset of the show. There's kind of a lot of gray area there about whether they had the right guy or not, whether the 911 caller actually gave them you know, the information about this one particular person who apparently stabbed him you know, a week previous uh, preceding. So so this one's you know, this one's kind of up in the air right now based on these facts.